Hello everybody, Flame and Shark back with another video. Today we're jumping into the second arc of Utena. It's time for episodes 14 through 17 of Revolutionary Girl Utena. And I'm very excited for this because the Student Council saga was great. And it ended with some really crazy shit. And then we got a, a recap episode that reminded me of recaps of the past, such as Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood episode 27 and uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion episode 4. 14, I believe. Um, yeah, I'm sure it's 14. I've, I've watched it enough times. But you get the point. It was a recap episode with legitimately a lot of recap, but they also layered in some really interesting stuff. Um, we got the tease of a certain potato who uh, we, we are yet to be familiar with. But he obviously is, you know, directly associated with the end of the world and has a hand in whatever is at play here. Um, and we also had that tease at the very end, um, you know, Evangelion references and all, um, uh, for the next saga, which is very exciting. And I'm really looking forward to what actually comes next, right? Because... In some form or fashion, Utena has defeated every duelist, um, including like including people that aren't even uh, officially members of the student council, like our girl uh, Nanami. So there's a lot of potatoes, and I am curious. Obviously, this is the Black Rose Saga. I, I do know the names of the sagas, right? Um, and being the Black Rose Saga... Obviously, the rose is symbolic in this series. The rose bride, the rose duels, the rose they put on them in the rose duels. So I'm assuming it's someone who would wear a black rose who is the black duelist, supposedly, potentially. Or they might even go by the black rose. Um, and he or she is probably some sort of... Um, they're probably some potato. I'm assuming it's an... Based on, especially with the little teaser we saw, I kind of think it's going to be a new character, but I don't know. And even if it is a new character, right? And like, let's say they have a duel with Utsuna and they win or lose or whatever. Even though this is the shortest of the three sagas, it's still 10 episodes, I believe. So... Oh, well, I get maybe even technically, it might even technically be 11 because the, the previous episode might even technically be considered part of it. But um, I'm just really curious. I'm really interested to see where they take this. And like the story is in uncharted territory now because the first third of Utano followed a formula. And obviously there were some subversions of the formula, some deviations from the formula. There was obviously a couple really fun filler episodes, but the general gist of it was, was that Utena would face a member of the student council and beat them. And it may be occasionally lose and come back and beat them, but whatever the case was, is she would keep dueling the student council one at a time. And we essentially have fulfilled the format. And now we enter the second third of Utena, the, um, the second saga as well. And I have no idea if we're going to extend the formula out a bit longer or if the series is going to completely change into something else entirely. And given the nature of the teases in the previous episode, the recap episode, you have to think that there is a good chance that either could be the case. And then on top of everything, like where do we go with Kiryu? Like what is next for Toga? Uh, there's just so much, right? Like, are we going to get like any form of like, you know, and even, even other characters, like what do they do with Sayanji? Like, where do they go with other potatoes? Right. But I think, you know, Toga is first and foremost is kind of at least among the student council being the primary antagonist of sorts to Utena. And obviously all the weird, uh, revelations and stuff about Utena and, you know, in the, you know, in the coffin and all that shit and just all the stuff there with, um, with, uh, Sayanji and Toga and like, there's just so much, there was so much in the last set. It's actually, despite the fact that we really watched three episodes and then like three, it was like three and a half kind of, um, there was so much to digest and unpack and I'm really curious and like, obviously the stuff with, 
um, Nan Nanami was crazy, and, like, there's just so much going on, and it's fucking great, and I just can't wait to see where it goes, and speaking of, we do have, of course, the Utena shirt, very cool, um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm really looking forward to what comes next, and, uh, I have no fucking clue, this show's wild, um, it's certainly a... It is certainly uh, showing itself to be very much a post-Ava show, and that is horrifying. And Ikuhara is showing to be a madman, which is equally terrifying. So, I guess let's just get into it and see what happens. Let's jump into episode 14 of Revolutionary Girl Utena in 3, 2, 1, and play. So I'm assuming the opening is going to be the same. But I don't expect it to change really at all throughout the entire series. I love this opening so much. It's been a while since I've heard it, too. Revolution. Yeah, and there's, like, a lot. Like, Jury's a character there's definitely more to get to with her at some point. There's a lot to it. Yeah, obviously a lot there, and I'm still curious what all of that's about, too. I s you swear that you'll change the world, huh? Alright, here we go. Holy shit, here we fucking go. I am so curious where... Where this story go? Oh, there we go! Right away, the Black Rose. Yeah, we did get the tease of the Black Rose in like the container or whatever. What the fuck? What the fuck? Because my Black Rose absorbed darkness. So what the fuck? What the fuck did any of that mean? The boys of the Black Rose. Okay. Were they both boys because... That's hot. If that's, if that's a boy's voice. Especially the, the darker skinned one. That's honesty for sure. Uh, that's Utsuna, yeah. Hmm. Something else going on? Oh. Wow. You're bushed, huh? Oh. She does something. Saturdays are like special. You idiot. God damn it. Oh, Utana Sama. Okay, the Kotetana. Gako this. Hasso. So you have a shumat no yoru, a yoku in Nakunaruke, or Nani Karno? Hi, Shuni Chidanga. Ah, yeah, okay. Yep. There's a Uni Samani. That that would explain it. That would explain the, the look. Yep, that would explain it. Yep, 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 yep. So the Black Rose, at least one of them, the, the one that sounded like a girl. Uh, uh, what the fuck? Good chairman, huh? Planetarium projector, yeah. 
Um, who the fuck is that? That almost looked like Nanami. Akio Otori, huh? Alright. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally not part of the end of the world or anything. Interesting. Okay, sure. Why not? That's all she does, right? It's certainly interesting. Interesting, okay. もう普通じゃないくらい。この設備のあるから、うちの養子になったんだなんて。陰口を言われてるくらいなんです。昨日もまたここに泊まったんですって。星はいいですよ。望遠鏡から覗くと見慣れた星もみんなの知らない素顔
僕は男の子だよ。君には花嫁の方が似合ってる。ああ。必ず君を本物のバラの花。What the fuck? そしてディオスの力を手に入れ、永遠の秘密を僕らを。するんだ。Oh. That's... 先輩がそう言うんだ。That's hard. 大丈夫。Okay, yeah, you guys do have a connection to end of the world, but you seem to be. Jesus. Damn, okay, so we got a, we got a boy over here, a groom who、uh, would look better as a, sounds better as a bride, huh? There's a lot that I, I'm, I'm here for that. So taking on the with the. So they have, like, obviously a romantic entanglement or something, these two. Not her, but. Hmm. There's a lot of seeds being planted in this episode. There's a lot going on. New characters,、um, new. new foils, new ambitions, just. A lot getting set up because we did kind of, like I said, wrap up the first part of the series in every sense、um, last time. Okay, that was not totally not ominous. The fuck is this? This is the interview? すぐに結婚する予定です。相手は理事長である父が勧めてくれました。彼は、oh. 彼は優しくて子供っぽいところもあるけど、本当は私よりずっと大人で温かく見守っていてくれているんです。彼のためなら何だってしてあげたい。心の底からそう思うんです。ただただ。Yeah? What's the accept? Go deeper, huh? It's like an elevator or something. This is really strange. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, that sounds about right for him and Mia. Oh, Jesus, that's. Oh, man. Oh, man. Bro, bro, I am not. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, so we, we got various people that want to kill her. It seems like this. It's no use, and that's how it started. What the. F- what in the Evangelion was that? Only choice to revolutionize the world. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. What the fuck is going on? This is the hundred where the hundred boys died. Hollow ground. They were all duelists. Excuse me? It's their corpses. Is she gonna get the ring? Yo! Yeah, this is kind of. Yeah, you're, you're, you're our black rose. Yeah, oh my god, that's hot. Is this gonna. Is this gonna, like. What the, what the fuck is this gonna do? Like, when you put on the black ring, the black rose ring, is it, does it, like, change you? Oh! Her girl just, like, stabbed her with a rose. That was hot. Oh my god, the Black Rose Crest. What the fuck? Okay then. 
Aha! Interesting. Oh, is that a dual like? The music makes it sound like a different type of invitation. Yo! Yo! Um! Um! Uh, uh, um, 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 this is, this is in a different form than before. What is up with these two? Or one, or zero. Interesting. And now it's dual time. Is the song gonna be different? It sounds different. Is it a new song? New song. Okay, it's the same lyrics right now, but it sounds a little different. It's like a remix. There's a little different beat to it. Yeah, they're saying all the same lines, but it doesn't sound the same. I'm wondering if we're gonna get any new lines. Man, I never get sick of listening to this, though. There she is! There's our girl! She's ready for a fight. She looks hardened now. She just looks... She's just ready to go. She had, you know, her motivation's been challenged, and now she's kind of a different, to some degree, a different person than she was before. Is it gonna be a coffin? Oh, it's a hundred gravestones, or class desks, but it's symbolic of the same thing. Oh, Lord. This is horrifying. Well, she was chosen. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. The other me I buried within myself. Interesting. Are we gonna fight within this? Yeah, I mean, you don't really have a choice here. It's interesting! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh, we're starting right now! Okay. Okay, you guys know I'm always thinking about these lyrics. Sure, sure. Even in the depths of hell, right? Yep. There's always hope. Yep. Yep. Their eternal dialogue will never end, huh? This is really freaky. Yep. Ironically happening in the day, this duel. Yeah, that just means you have to win, yep. Yep. She seems to be channeling the, uh, the, the power of Dios more and more. And kind dwarf by his creator can only look at and fear. The gravity of it all, right? Interesting. Interesting lyrics, and that was a very quick duel. Oh, oh, oh. 
interesting. And she fell right on one of the corpse things. But she's sleeping. Interesting. Into the world thinks of it. Fair enough. Interesting. So it's like it sacrifices the body, but they still got 99 of those that they could potentially use, I guess, to like corrupt people almost. It, interesting. I mean, obviously she she had negative feelings that were that they were able to utilize, but still. You would think, yes. No, it's like a, almost like, not brainwashing necessarily, but... Yeah, I get the feeling you're gonna face a few more people like that before you get to maybe face some of the good ones. Mm. Yeah, let's see. Have a good time with Akio, I guess. Interesting. Choo Choo doesn't come along for that. Oh, we're hitting a nice piano here. Hey, Akio. Takes off her glasses. Moide, Anzi. What the fuck are we about to see? This music, um, the planetarium, yeah. Um. The fuck? That, that sounded so sexual, and honestly, there's already enough... I mean, there's already basically incest. Like, Nanami wants to fuck her brother. Like, so, I wouldn't even doubt it, honestly. Well, that was very ominous, and I have no fucking clue what any of that meant. Wow. This is actually getting, like... I talked about how, like, we've had, we're getting shades of Evangelion, that whole episode just felt like Evangelion, what the fuck? God, I love this song, too. so hard to get a read on Anki, just when you think you're starting to get a read on her. She's been so hard to read this entire series. Interesting. Alrighty. That was episode 14 of Revolutionary Girl Utena. We have begun the Black Rose Saga, and Black Roses are certainly abundant at, at the moment. We met multiple new characters. We met, we met Soji, we met Akio, we met um, Kanai, and there's still one more character who I think they might have said one of their names once, but I didn't actually catch it, and that was the, uh, the very fem feminine dude who, um, is working with, uh, Soji, presumably, uh, you know, to, to try and, because Soji wants to make that guy his Rose Bride, and, and, and in the pro, and get the power together, like, so they want to, win the Rose Bride, kill the Rose Bride, and then he wants her or him, <laughs> fucking hell, to become the new Rose Bride. And then the two of them together will have the power of Dios and all that stuff. Um, but I didn't get the name of the potato with the very feminine dude. 
But Soji, Akio, and Kanai, uh, Kanai, I fucking no idea how to say the blonde's name, that uh, Utena dueled, but... Nonetheless, that was a great episode of Utena. It was wild, and it was one of those where it like it felt like there was almost too much going on. Like there were a lot of threads that they were pulling, a lot of things that they were throwing at you very quickly, and it felt like you know, it it almost made me feel like the first arc was training wheels, and now it's like here we fucking go. You better keep up. And I'm down for it. Like, hey, let's let's hit the gas. We still got a lot of Utsuna left to go, but we're also hardly at the beginning at this point. So, you know, let's let's heat it up. And uh, it's interesting that the Circle of the Black Rose, or the um, the uh, what was it, the Makage? I uh, forget what the other. It was the Makage something. But the Circle of the Black Rose, obviously is some, like, subdivision of all of this, because obviously they do, you know, speak of the end of the world. Apparently the end of the world is beyond the, uh, the 100 fallen duelists, whatever the hell that means. And, um, obviously they speak of, like, oh, yeah, I, I can see why Tenjo Utena is so, um, it, the end of the world has so high hope, such high hopes for her and all that stuff. And, uh, it's really interesting and I'm really curious just, like, where this is going to go. And obviously they wanted to recruit Mickey to the uh, to the to to their uh, group, their organization. Um, I don't know how much Mickey does and doesn't know because obviously Mickey is someone who receives letters from the end of the world. So it's not like Mickey, Mickey obviously knows about a lot of what's going on. But obviously I imagine less than what uh, Soji knows if I had to guess. But again, that's still very unclear. And then we got this whole dynamic between Akio and Auntie, who uh, is supposedly Akio, supposedly her big brother. Uh, no clue what to make of that. And I guess we'll find out as we uh, continue on. I No clue. In fact, even her hanging out with him um, under the stars of the planetarium, Sitch, Sitch, is where we actually left off episode 14, so that's pretty interesting. But, this episode was a lot of maneuvering in the background, it actually had very little to do with Utsuna, um, she was kind of just a bit player, she was there to, oh, uh, to be there to, to notice that Anthe isn't around, to go and and meet Auntie's brother. She was there to duel and, and, and beat Kanai. And, but like, there wasn't really much. She was just kind of there to advance the plot in certain directions. But this was an episode about Auntie. And this was an episode about all the new characters. Kanai, Akio, Soji, and the, 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 the femboy, um, whose name escapes me. Like all of these potatoes, um, are kind of where the focus was. And, and it makes sense. We have to establish these new characters for the saga because that's what, you know, they're going to be the, the featured characters throughout this arc. So it, it makes a lot of sense that we have to, you know, kind of properly establish them moving forward. And I really liked that. And I thought the episode was pretty good. I think like, obviously, and they even mentioned that like, oh, like she stood no chance with, you know, how I made her a duelist and everything. It was, like, not against someone as skilled as Utsuna, um, you know, or as powerful as Utsuna, however you want to frame it exactly. Because she is skilled, but she's not the most skilled. Obviously, that's jury, but she has um, she has a lot behind her is, is kind of what, what matters. And it, it is interesting to see where this is going to go, because this Black Rose stuff is wild and... Um, it's already showing to be wild, and we've only just started, so I can't imagine how crazy it will get as we get deeper into um, the little revolutionary girl Utsuna, or even just this set, because we are going to get through quite a bit of the saga in just this video, so it should be really interesting, and I'm looking forward to it, so... Yeah, I think uh, that, that just about sums it up for episode 14, so I think we're going to check out episode 15. Also... We had the Mickey sighting, but there was no jury, there was no Sayanji, there was no Toga, uh, none of them. I'm curious when they're going to factor in. I'm, I'm curious if we're going to kind of stray away from the student council potatoes for the most part, and they're going to kind of become more relevant in the in the final saga, maybe, um, or if they're going to kind of sp um, sprinkle in here and there. It does feel like, like the student council isn't going to be that big of a deal at this point because of, uh, you know, Utina's progress up to this point. But we'll have to see because I, I definitely think all of those characters have a lot of unresolved stuff. Ironically, the one that I felt had the least is Mickey, who is the one that we actually saw in this episode and has been offered to join up with, um, 
with Soji Mikage. So I guess we'll see if uh, Mickey has a lot to do or at least something to do with this arc or what have you. But uh, whatever the case may be, that's for us to discover moving forward. For the time being, I think we're ready to jump into episode 15 of Utena. All right, let's jump into Utena episode 15 in 3, 2, 1, and play. Just a long, long time. Take my revolution. Very curious what's next, obviously, because that episode, like, obviously we have um, Auntie hanging out with Akio and that whole deal, but I'm just, I'm just curious, yeah, I don't know. Like, is it going to be more of the same, where they're going to find other people who hold, harbor negative feelings towards Himimiya to uh, turn into Black Rose Duelist to challenge Utena, or what? I still think that's teasing, like, whatever that means with the horses and flying through the sky with Auntie and Utena with the spears, I feel like whatever that is is something that's not going to come up until the final arc. I feel like they threw, that. that's one of the few, like, teases of, like, post-first arc that I think is in there. I think that's something for the final arc. It could just be symbolic. Interesting that we're starting with Mickey again, though. Really is looking like Mickey's going to be a... Uh, Featured character this uh, arc. Oh, back to the piano stuff. Oh, there's Sis again. <laughs> hitting on boys, as she does. Or boys hitting on her. Either way, she's into it. What's that? Not at all. <laughs> yeah, I knew she was going to say that. Well, well. <laughs> That just sounds sus. Yeah, she's a playgirl, and however you want to frame that. Interesting that you're. Creepy. Why? Why are we doing this? This is reminding me of. This is reminding me of episode. This is reminding me of like episode. What? That you know exactly what episode though? The fucking, fucking Toga, and like the weird implications there with his sister and him, and the world seemed from Kozue. Is that Sis's name? Because I. That's not a name I know, unless Kozue could also be the, uh, the, the one member of the, uh, the one member of the- Oh my god, it's Toga. Bro's depressed. I'm so curious what they're gonna do with his character. Dude, that outfit is, looks so good on you, girl. I'm not a big fan of the bright yellow, but... Interesting. So she is gonna like fill in for him. Are we actually gonna get? Yeah, I was. Yeah. Interesting. Are they gonna try to black rose them? Damn, that's actually funny. That's funny. Interesting! 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 Back to Sis again. 
Kozui. It is Kozui, okay. Even the name, like, even the, like, the world through her eyes is, like, the symbolic of, uh, what the fuck. It's symbolic of... Wow. That's just rude. Oh. Oh my god. And this is the tie. It's, of course, Auntie. That was so adorable the way he was like <gasps> What the fuck Mickey oh my god you're so cute Liar Oh you're such a you're so adorable Mickey you simp Oh, what the fuck? Bro, Utena's the fucking best. Oh my god, Mickey, you're so cute! Choo Choo is cute, but not as cute as you, Mickey. Like, don't lie to us. Well, yeah, it's also Mickey, not Mickey. But Utena, you usually call... Mickey, Mickey. So. Sumimasen, Boku, Nanka Hendako to itemasne. Ano, hi. Gambare, Mohitokoe. The worst part is everyone knows that she'll say yes. Or she'll ask you tonight. It's no Boku no Nakano sense any shoka stands. Um, um, what the fuck is that? Oh, it's...何か用でしょうか。<笑><笑> Yeah. How about that? Not protecting Mickey per se, but you're you certainly have a mindset. Damn. Damn, they're even you got the fucking color coded here. Even though both of you are blue. You're bl you're like light blue, she's dark blue bordering on purple, but you guys... Oh my god, the sunlit garden, of course. Really love how we're continuing Mickey's stuff, and we're continuing her- his- Oh my god. His stuff with Kozui as well. Like, I love that we're doing that. Sokka, you're Kozui-chan. That's kind of a rude thing to say, even though I get what you're what you're going for. That is a scary face. Ah, oh, yes, the next person that wants to kill Auntie. <laughs> I love it. So interesting. So interesting that they keep finding people that want to kill her ass. Oh my god. Oh my god, the music's different too. 
This is a different chance. Huh. Interesting. And also Nanami, yep. Yeah, Cage for the resolution of the world. Yo, that's wild. You do have the ring, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, there hasn't actually been anything to do. Makes sense. What the fuck is your relationship with her, though? True. I think? Hmm. It depends on the big brother, it depends on the little sister. Huh. Sure. There's actually a telescope in this very room, believe it or not, that I'm in. I am very much... I can relate to that. I'm a big, big astronomy fan. It's interesting how she, despite everything, it seems like she almost has a, she's developing like a pseudo Yandere relationship with her brother, which is really funny because that was not the, where I thought her character would go in a million years, but it is interesting. That is creepy looking. Wait! No, no, I get it. あ、姫宮さん、ごめんなさい。王室の方も回ってきたものだから。そんな姫宮さんが来てくれただけで嬉しいです。今日面会の約束をしてるんだけど。The interview thing again. Oh god, here we go. Bro. Please, for the love of God, do not tell me there's three pairs of incest in this series. <laughs> Nanami wants to fuck her brother. Kozui possibly wants to fuck her brother. And Hime Mimiya potentially does fuck her brother. I love it though. This is ridiculous. This is so ridiculous. If, if, if that's actually the case, and there's triple incest in this series, this really is the best anime ever. Like, stupid. Because that's the vibes I'm getting now. Yep. Interesting. So you do this interview thing, and then you. Yep. ミキは私の双子の兄なんです。小さい頃から私のこととても楽しみにしてくれてて、最近は平気な顔をよく見せてくれてて、喜んでたりして汚れたりすると、ミキは心の中でとっても傷つくの。私のことで心がいっぱい
She's playing the Sunlit Garden, yep. Holy shit. Yo! There's a ring on that finger, though, I bet. One of those ten. Eight. Whatever. Yep, there's a ring. Bro. Bro, she is not. What the fuck? Oh, that music! Oh my god! In a way. The rose which blooms at the end of the world. Yeah, taking his heart as a What the hell? <laughs> The sword comes from... What the fuck? I don't even know what to say. This show is insane. And there's an invitation, too. Yep. And then again, same thing, yep. It's like time stops, it freezes, but it's a shot of Utena, and then there's the framing in the background. Wow. <laughs> Fucking trade. I'd only be interested in the sandwiches, to be honest. Yep. Wow, what the fuck. And then it goes straight to the, uh, straight to the, the duel again. It's that same, same, like, we have a new, like, transition. And it's, it's different, which is interesting. Alright, we're gonna get Kozui versus Utena, but this is freaky. So now we've confirmed double incest in this show. Insane. And like, there's implied triple incest actually. Unbelievable. Only revolutionary girl Utsuna, only Ikuhara would be this absurd and based. It's ridiculous. It makes a lot of sense though. Kozui's character actually makes sense now. Like more than it did before. Cause she wants, that's the thing. She's per she purposely wants to get, like, caught by Miki. She wants Miki to be, like, sussed out and all that. Like, it, it, it's so interesting. Obviously, that was especially true with why she was fooling around with, of all people, fucking Toga. And it affected him the way that she wanted it to, whereas... Things just aren't the same now. It's really interesting. I can't get over how much incest is in this series. Oh, that's kind of dapper. Well, yes and no. The Black Rose gives them the power to revolutionize the world. And also, it's like a, a driving force, but it's di different. Yeah, you're fighting a, a Mickey in, in, in more ways than one. Yep, and again, the theme is starting right away. It's starting here. Okay, okay, this is actually thematic. The first ever reference I think of a time machine in a song, but it is thematic to, like, the past and the future. Clinging to the innocence of youth. Interesting. 
Vivi con Vito. Interesting. Yeah, I think this is going to be more of a challenge than... Also, the, a lot of English in this one. Interesting that she's drinking that. <laughs> oh my god! Mickey and I are the only things worthy of existence. Yeah, it's Mickey's skill. Yep. I'm fighting with Mickey's brilliance. And it's showing that there's nothing that she values more than Mickey. Yo, that slip! Holy shit, Utsuna! Oh, that... That, that, that frickin'... Oh, she's using the power! Here we go! I mean, not to the extent that Toga did, but that was a little bit of it. Yep. Scattered dream blossoms right as the black rose scatters. Back, same thing. And once again, the same thing. She's in one of the uh, the silhouettes, and then another one of the bodies will get burned, and all the same formulaic stuff, I assume, there. The new formula. Yep. Because she wants her brother. And now her brother wakes up. Sure. That makes sense. Yep, there goes another body to get cremated. 98 to go. Yep. So it'd be Nanami fighting for Toga. What about the others, though? Anemia? Sure. Yeah, a kiss on the forehead. Oh, she wants the milkshake now. Wow, that's a creepy fucking thing. Huh. The moon is symbolic of weird things. Oh, are we going back to them again yet? Where she takes off the glasses? Here we go again. Are we ending another episode like this? It's also the way that he's fucking posed in the fucking, like, the Choo-choo. Choo-choo, uh. Yeah, the implication, especially thematically in the context of this episode, the implication is that they're fucking, which is wild. I don't know if that's actually what's going on, but that's the implication. And I don't think I'm wrong to think that at all. This show is insane. Like, unhinged. But I love it. I think there's a lot of uh, adults who just cling to old stories, but uh... This, in and of itself, this show literally is an old story now, relatively speaking. It's older, it's as old as I am, at least. It, it does blow me away that this was made in 97, but I can't, I'm struggling to imagine this being made in 2023 either. Like, I'm just struggling to imagine. It blows me away that this show just exists. This show is so unhinged. That was episode 15 of Revolutionary Girl Utena, and that was a great episode. Like, I think with episode 14, it, it was there was a lot of characters, a lot of things that were getting flying at us really fast, and it felt like very condensed. Like, it felt like an episode that 
could have used more time to breathe. And then they kind of like, you know, almost, I don't want to say shoehorned a fight in, but they kind of almost shoehorned a duel in. Whereas this episode felt, um, you know, much more relaxed, con controlled. It had more of the typical Utena pacing. And it had it told a really nice story about Kazui, uh, Kozui that made sense and actually made me understand the character a lot more than I did, I feel like, prior to this episode. I feel like her character is, like, coming to... I mean, it's the most focus her character's ever had. Because we have only seen her character from Mickey's perspective, not from Kozue's perspective. But it was really interesting to see that. And I felt like she makes a lot more sense with the with her actually not only, you know, caring about her brother, but actually fucking, like, adoring her brother to a unhealthy degree um, in multiple senses. And, and it explained a lot. And it just, everything kind of fell into place. I feel like everything clicked in my interpretation of, of Kozue. And now, like, I get it. I get who she is. I get, like, the point. Um, it is really sus, though, that I, I, I do want to mention this. There's essentially three... Um, I'll say three major characters who have siblings, um, or however you want to frame it, right? There's three brother-sister dynamics in the series. I could be forgetting one, but as far as actual, like, blood-related or whatever, right? There's three brother-sister dynamics, and it's implied in every single one that at least one of them wants to bone the other. Are you kidding me? Like... That's insane. Like, I respect, like, doing, like, the incest angle and stuff. I think it's actually pretty interesting. I think it's, one, it's one of the funniest things in fiction anytime there's incest. It just pops me every time I laugh my ass off. But this is absurd. Like, I actually think it's really interesting. I think, like, there's a lot of, you can do a lot interesting with characters and with uh, narrative implications with this type of plot. And I think it's actually been a really drive, a good driving force into Nanami and why she's the best worst girl. But I, and I think it's really interesting. Like, that's the thing. I think all of these are interesting individually. It's just me thinking about the fact that all of them seem to be a thing in different ways though, right? Because there's only like one that seems to actually be happening. But what the hell? Like, actually what the fuck that is so weird and hilarious and um i'm here for it i am so here for it it's just like why though <laughs> it's great though i'm i find it incredibly amusing and um yeah that episode i think was like the duel was a lot more interesting um and like it was someone that we care about like part of the problem too about last episode is can i uh whatever she was a new character that was introduced and we we kind of like did all of this with her all at once whereas obviously like kozui is a character who we have prior experience with and we can kind of get behind her more and if anything this episode helped flesh her out um flesh out a character that we're already familiar with and the connections to the uh the student council make a lot of sense so i would assume that like maybe nanami um duels uh maybe they find like jury's girl uh that she has um that she loves uh maybe we get um i don't know what we would do with sayanji i don't even think sayanji is just gonna be part of that but there are student council members that you know we can maybe use their hearts in some form or fashion to fuel more duels for utana which should be really cool so there's definitely potential here uh, to get more uh, mileage out of it. But obviously we're not going to be in this arc for too long. It is the shortest of the three. So I am curious where this is going to progress. Because I imagine we're going to get something crazy. Either at the end in, in, in episode uh, 17. Or maybe even like a two part or something. Something that like kicks off in the next episode. And, and, and continues through episode 17 or something. But um, I guess we'll have to see. And that's. That's why we watch the episodes, and that's what we look forward to in these reactions. What comes next? Because I am definitely very excited to see what comes next, because this has been uh, really fun so far. Like I said, I liked episode 15 more than 14, just because I felt like episode 15 was like better structured. Episode 14 felt like it had 
like two episodes of content jammed into one, whereas episode 15 felt like a properly paced episode. And that's really the only thing, because I liked everything in episode 14. It was just like boom, boom, boom. It was also the first time, first time we see these characters, a lot of these characters, first time we get the, that fucking like crazy, the appointment. Oh my God, the appointments. Holy shit. Like I love the thematic implications of them and being locked in the small room. It's almost like a confessional, but it's also an elevator and it's about going deeper and deeper into your psyche, into your true emotions and feelings, which allows them to um, prepare to revolutionize the world, so to speak. And like, I, I love the way they do that. I think it's very... It's thematic to Utsuna, but it's also, like, just very cool and symbolic and weird and trippy. And, like, yeah, like, it's that very, like, Evangelion-esque shit that I fucking love. So I think that shit's awesome, and I love to see more of it. And I'm really curious who else they're going to get into this game of let's let's uh, beat Utsuna and kill Auntie. Um, it's a fun game, and I hope, I'm curious to see who comes next. So, yeah. I'm ready to jump into episode 16 of Revolutionary Girl Utena. All right, let's jump into episode 16 of Utena in 3, 2, 1, and play. <laughs> I also love how Utsa is with the boys there, because she's the prince, and then you have, of course, Himemiya with the girls, because she's the rose bride. But obviously this entire show has a very interesting, uh, very fluid identity kind of premise, right? We talked about, like, obviously Utena's a girl, but she's a prince. We have, like, a wannabe rose bride that's a dude, etc., etc., right? But there's just really, like, the idea of identity, of self, of sexuality, of gender, like all of those concepts are really interesting in the show and the way they're portrayed. And I feel like I could probably write up a paper about the concept as a whole in Utena, but I could also probably write up a paper about individual characters in such a sense. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, we're getting the recap about Utena's uh, the fairy tale, so to speak. That's not quite how it seemed in, uh, in uh, the previous set, but who knows. She did for a moment in the last set, but generally speaking, she has lived up to that. その指輪が君を僕のところへ導くだろう。王子様がくれた指輪はやはり演芸辞令だったのでしょうか。それはいいとしてお姫様は王子様に憧れるあまり自分も王子様になる決意をしてしまったのです。Hey, <笑> The Cowbell of Happiness. Okay, I don't have a clue what that's about. That's a strange title if I've ever seen one. Okay, Steve. Okay, Sebastian Dior, all right. Interesting. Girl watching. The world's smallest TV thing. <laughs> she actually wants it. Interesting. She wants a Dior pendant. Do we have another get together with the school? 
Of course, Nami looking classy as always. She looks very pretty. It really isn't anything, like, too crazy, but it's very pretty. Oh, the shoes are wild. Oh. I feel like the accessories are all... I feel like the dress is the weakest thing. Like, the dress looks nice, but I feel like all her accessories look great. Oh, uh, she's doing the... Uh, she's doing her laugh, but she's doing it a lot more calm. That just... Don't get too excited over this, girls. Uh, she had the Dior pendant. Special pendant, though. Like, don't, don't, don't get your panties too wet there, girl. Oh, shit, jury! Oh my god. The pendant. Oh. Jury, you look fancy. Sully a rich, huh? Bro, all of these girls and all, this entire fucking show is just rich people. Rich people, how weird are rich people? That is literally this entire series. Nanami,ほ、あら、ジュリ先輩、こんばんは。ジュリ先輩、どうしたんだ？急にパーティーなんか開いたりして、そろそろ縁も竹縄だし、教えてくれてもいいだろう？そ、それは。Is this the Dior pendant? Yeah. Oh my god, the way they're saying Sebastian Dior. Yeah, I mean, everyone knows Dior. What the fuck? I love how her evil laugh has, like, really toned down because she's not quite as evil. What the fuck? Dude, is this a prank? Is this gonna be a prank? Dude. This is... Fuck, it's gonna be Choo Choo or something. Choo Choo. I'm calling Choo Choo. What the fuck? Or is Sebastian Dior an a, a, a actually god in this universe? It's Choo Choo. Because, because it was Auntie that wanted it. Choo Choo. What the fuck? What the fuck is that? The fuck is that? A cowbell! Ah, uh, okay. Sebastian Dior no cowbell. Imagine. A Sebastian Dior cowbell. The worst part is that probably does exist. I mean, yes and no. The fact that you're wearing a cowbell on your collar is incredibly concerning. Although I'm sure you would put on a cowbell on your collar if your brother told you to. So... Yeah. What the- and then we just cut? What?! And we just leave off like that and move on to the next day? Are you kidding me? Bro, is she gonna wear this? Oh my god, she's still wearing the cowbell. Cows. Yep, 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 yep. The jokes, the jokes are so easy. The jokes are so easy. Trust me, she'd be ecstatic to be called a cow by her, her dearly beloved Toga. I mean, she knows what it is. It's not like she's... <laughs> Why are the Nanami episodes the, always the funniest? Dude, 
Bro, do not tell me she's wearing the cowbell mid-tennis match. What the fuck? Dude, this looks so stupid. It is a cowbell of happiness that makes her happy. It is something, that's for sure. Bro, she's literally alone. I guess who would she eat with if Bro's not around? But I guess she does have various, like, girlfriends and stuff. That looked incredibly healthy. Uh, nothing she's saying is wrong. All of that was true. Hey, it's a little bro! It's a little bro! Oh my god, the three simps back there. <laughs> what the fuck? This is the funniest thing ever. I can't wait till we till we learn that this is not actually a Dior. Damn. Oh, yeah, you better not fit. <laughs> there it is. It's a little stronger there. Is the boy girl upset? I mean, yeah. I mean, damn, that's kind of. I mean, yes, it is. Yeah, they're not comparable, but it is a pretty good comeback. I'm not going to lie. Oh, Suwabuki, don't even bother. That's rude to say anyone in this show has fat legs. Come on. This is literally the show where everyone's like eight feet tall and skinny as fuck. Come on. This is so funny. Oh my god, she's in the in the barn waiting for her uh, her bull, right? Bro, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, bro. I was making jokes about this. Wait, we're what? We're actually getting a lyrical song. Never mind that. Eat your hay, cow. <laughs> oh my god, he's about to slaughter the cow. This is the weirdest dream ever. With the sad look, the cow sighs held. Oh. Dona, 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 okay. Sayonara, Nanami. What the actual fuck? <laughs> no! That's a dream and a half. Imagine the fucking eat the Daki Moth. Trust me, she wants to get eaten by her big brother, but not in that way. What the fuck? Don't worry, she is. Oh my god, oh my god, why does that, why does that look like a cow, that shirt? Yeah, even her ha 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 is like way less, it's way more calm. It's not like her evil laugh is a lot less evil. More? More? Like, why is it the O that you emphasize? 
Stop emphasizing the O, please. She's starting to laze around like a cow! What the fuck? Bro, bro, she's about to have another dream, but how does it get worse than the last one? Wow, cow ears. What the fuck is going on? Why is she literally turning into a cow? Bro, why is she literally a cow? Why is she turning into a cow? What the fuck is this episode? This is somehow weirder than triple incest. And she's one of the... the, the this is the weirdest thing ever what the fuck this is just please stop Tsuobuki. Yeah. Literally a cow. She literally turned into a towel? Cow? I swear to God we're gonna find a cow. She's eating grass. She is literally turning into a cow. Yeah, yeah, that's the appropriate music, not that shit. Yes, I guess we're getting our extra. ネコの首に鈴をつけるはいいんです。ゆうちゅう、おねずだろ。なんだ玉がいいんじゃ。ゆうちゅう、でも一体誰がネコの首に鈴をつけるの だからお約束通りおいらだけは逃してくださいよ。え、猫さん、ちょっと。あ、あ、バグ。マグマグマグ。That's Girl literally mind broke herself. Trying to run away from reality. This is really taking running away from reality really far. I love how she's just knitting over there. Oh. Girl literally just came out of her hypnosis. Oh, what the fuck, you creeps. カオシンディオール。君はカウベルのなんたるかも知らずにその馬鹿でかい鈴を首につけて得意になっていたわけさ。今の君は牛そのものだ。Damn! This is so stupid. 
There's the OA. This is the weirdest thing I've ever watched. I somehow it got infinitely weirder than triple incest in the very next episode. Fucking pitchfork. Rake. It's actually a rake, not pitchfork, but you get the point. God. I guess they didn't follow the other trip, this is so dumb. And the cowbell was the fucking, the fucking flower, the rose. This did not happen. <laughs> I guess it's symbolic while you, meanwhile, or, yeah, meanwhile, while you're wearing the most fancy of shit. Yep, it was the cute cowbell. Yep, it was hers. Yo, why? Why do you call your cow Nanami, though? Oh, no. Now it's going to be a nose ring. She's about to have a giant freaking nose ring on, isn't she? Oh, no. Give it to us. I think she'd look cute with a little one. Oh. We don't get to see it! Oh, I hate you, Ikar. You are the worst. Unless, unless it literally is to be continued and the next episode is going to be the fucking nose ring episode. That was absurd. These Minami episodes just find a way to keep getting weirder and weirder every time, I guess. Unbelievable. Yes, sir. Yep. Sing truth and forever. Kissing love and true your heart. Mm. I'm trying to think of what I'm supposed to say about this episode right now as the ED uh, wraps up here. I'm like literally at a loss of just what to even. Like, where do I even start with this? Honestly, like, that was... Utena never fails to impress and amaze me with its episodes in all different types of ways. This really is... I will say this is such a special show. I... Like, there's so many things this show does that I just can't imagine ever seeing again in another show. Like, 
This is a fucking classic for a reason. And I get, obviously, like, this isn't a very popular series on the channel and all that, which is fine, because I don't really care that much, you know? Um, some are popular, some aren't. But for those of you who are actually watching my Utena reactions, I'm sure you guys were so excited when you found out that I was doing this series. Because this series... It's made for me in ways that I didn't even expect. Like, it's... The silly nature of it is, like, so in my wheelhouse. And then, like, the the fucking... The, the psychological, um, you know, nonsense is so in my wheelhouse. The... God, everything. The aesthetic. Like, there's just nothing I don't love about this show. It's, it's kind of wild, right? Like... This show just does everything so fucking well, and it does it in such a unique way that is so distinctly Utena, and I fucking am here for every second of it. And I just am so glad um, to to be watching it now, and like I'm having such a great time watching this series. I'm having such a great experience with Revolutionary Girl Utena, and I'm having so much fun being able to share that experience with all of you. And it's just it's just been an absolute blast. And it's something I, I've been enjoying so freaking much. And I'm just so excited to uh, to continue on. We're we're creeping towards the halfway point. I mean, notwithstanding the film, I suppose. Because uh, with 39 episodes, the halfway point would obviously between be between episodes 19 and 20. And uh, we're getting pretty close to that. That's crazy. That'll be stuff that we cover in the next uh, Utena video after this one. We will cross the halfway mark, excluding the film. So that'll be really crazy. But I'm really excited and really looking forward to episode 17. It'll be our first cutoff of the Black Rose Saga. And obviously uh, 14 and 15 were really crazy. 15, I think, is still my favorite episode of the set because this was just so absurd. I just don't even know what to make of this one. Um, it was definitely funny, but, like, Nanami turning into a cow is just so silly on so many levels. It's almost too silly, but there's no such thing as that. Um, but it was definitely an episode of all time. And now with the next episode, I'm assuming we're going to be heading back into uh, much more serious territory, especially because it is the set ending episode. I think that would make a hell of a lot of sense, but I guess we'll have to see what actually happens. But, um, I'm just having a really good time and I'm sure it's been showing throughout my reactions, but I really fucking love Utena. I think this is such a cool show. And yeah, I'm just having a really good time. And that episode was a great example of just having a really good time. It was a fun, ridiculous, silly as hell, but fun as hell episode where we just got to appreciate the greatness of Nanami and in the weirdest way possible, where it was like her stubborn pride that that didn't that made her allowed her to be ridiculous and literally end up turning into a cow until we saved her because who gives a fuck, right? Like, just stupid shit like that just happens in Utena, and that's part of what makes Utena so iconic and so charming. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's true, well and truly, that was an episode of all time, and it was definitely one that uh, I will not be forgetting anytime soon. I will not forget Nanami turning into a literal cow, and... Um, God, the fucking dream she had with Togo was so fucking stupid. Oh my lord. The fact that there was actually a song written for this episode is is somehow one of the most absurd things of the whole episode. Like, everything about this episode was just absolutely unbelievable. And um, it goes without saying that I watched the episode, I've seen it with my own two eyes, and I still don't believe that actually was the real episode 16 of Revolutionary Girl Utena. And that's despite the fact that we've seen some weird shit, specifically in Nanami episodes. Like, holy shit, let, let us not forget the fucking Nanami episode with the elephants. Good freaking lord, that Curry episode was ridiculous. Um, with a capital dick. But, um... Yeah, that was that was hilarious. I really, really enjoyed that episode. I'm really excited to see what the uh, final episode of the set is. So, uh, yeah, I, I guess uh, we could probably jump right into episode 17 because I am very excited to see what we have in store here as we jump in to episode 17. All right, let's check out 
Episode 17 of Revolutionary Girl Utena in 3, 2, 1, and play. Do 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 do. Just a long, long time. Go and take my revolution. That always gets me. It's the sunlight garden, and then that's an actual thing in the show too. I mean, that is the sunlight garden, but obviously the stuff with Mickey. We've had a little tease of Toga. We actually have not seen Sayonji yet at all, which is interesting. Okay, yeah, this already feels more serious than the low. Oh, a jury episode. Interesting. Okay, so we are going to bring her in to duel Utena then. That does seem to be where we're going. Yeah, she is cruel. <laughs> Girl doesn't... Yeah, no, actually, that's part of the... Little do you know, Girl. Mm-hmm. It's a lot deeper than that. Thorns of Death. Oh my god, that's a title. Feels about that that's an appropriate title though for Utana. The fencing practice with Mickey and Jury, I assume. Oh no, it's Jury and some dude. Oh my god, shoot you, you're so cute. She's somehow even better. Wild. And Uta is no match for Jury, it's just fate. Oh shit. That was Jury. That time. Uh-oh. She noticed. Her, the love of her life is watching. Oh, joy. And she's smiling, too. That's slightly creepy. <gasps> I mean... Yeah. That's an unfulfilled jury, alright. Sure. Shiori Takatsuki. Interesting. Oh lord, that's sussy. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and I also I also stole her man, but little do I know, little do we know, right? That's a way to say it. Yep. Damn. Okay, she seems aware of that fact. Oh my god, that pause! That pause was wild. Interesting. Oh, this is great. I'm glad that we're bringing up the jewelry stuff again with Shiori. That's great. You knew it was coming at some point, and she's obviously the next Black Rose duelist. It's orange. 
人気は美しく咲くバラはやはり人気は危険なトゲは Thorns of Death Rose が about to kiss the あ先輩 Oh yes This is hot わざとやったな I don't know bro This shit's hot. I don't know what's going on with you two. I still don't know your name. Parasite's <laughs> Quaid. Ah, so you guys set everything up. You set this up with Jury. This whole situation has been set up by the circle of the Black Rose. So, this is the first time that the Queen of the Black Rose has been in the Black Rose. So, this is the first time that the Queen of the Black Rose has been in the Black Rose. So, this is the first time that the Queen of the Black Rose has been in the Black Rose. So, this is the first time. Damn. Oh, we're actually addressing this already? I was gonna say, I feel like that's something we're not gonna find out till the last arc. To be, like... Dude, Nanami is sussy. Yeah, Jury's in longing right now, thinking about her, uh, her girl, her girl is here. Oh, we're actually seeing someone go down on their own, that's wild. Dude, the amount like the cuck imagery here is ridiculous. Like I can't get over the fact that Jury was literally a cuck. Damn. What are you going to say, Jury? Because little do you know that that's not... That entire thing is based off a misunderstanding that ironically kind of makes it hurt more. What the fuck? Oh, I guess it was a it was a glass window. It's symbolic. そう、私は彼を愛してはいなかった。だから君が気に病むことは何もない。だったら、ベンダントには誰の写真が入ってるの？今だってその服の下に。Damn, she was able. She noticed that. Oh, you silly girl. Think about it. Yes, it is. しおりさんいい人じゃないですか昔は仲良かったんでしょあの人本当に先輩のこと信頼してるみたいだし君もしおりとんだおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおお
大地あんな言い方しなくてもいいのに。君はまるで水がめざのしょうね。ガネミード、オーケー。ブロー。This guy, everything this guy does is a fucking space reference? That's wild. Senpai mo so na koto itte mashita. Tanin ni wa fure rale ta ko nai koto ga dare ni maara mano desu. Hmm. So na mo de shou ka? Yeah. That is good advice, but also. The poison of love. I really hope everything works out for, for them. I'm just so curious how Shiori would, will react, right? Because it's like Shiori most likely is straight, and that's why, like, this thought is just, it's something she's never, she just has never even considered the possibility. Even if it's. You know, the obvious conclusion. She's about to throw it in the water. Oh shit. Kimi no shashin o sterare na katta no wa, watashi no yoasa da. Daga, watashi wa kiseki o shinji nai. Hmm. That goes back to her thematically jury's character. She doesn't believe in miracles. That goes back to what happened in the unfulfilled jury episode and her duel with Utena and the whole nine yards. The orange flowers. Well, isn't that funny? Oh no. You shouldn't open it, but you will. Oh, did you make an appointment? <laughs> Holy shit. Sure. Jesus Christ. Deeper. Yep, go deeper. Yep. Little did you know, that was... Huh. Yeah, that makes perfect sense, because it was kind of pathetic. Yeah, yeah, that is true. But the, the, I've beaten her in the end, that's so creepy. What the fuck is wrong with you, Shiori? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with her? Cause she loves you. Holy shit. God, what the fuck do you actually want, girl? I doubt that'll bring you happiness either, but you might as well. The pe you might as well try. Oh my god. I'm, I, I fucking love these elevator scenes. These elevator scenes are incredible. It's one of the best things about what's going on right now. Dude, this is so fucking cool. Shiori? Yeah. What do you want? This is your fault. Why did you do that? I saw it. If you can tell me, I would like to show you a better picture. Holy shit! Holy shit! Oh, 
Bro, 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 bro. Dude, I know like a big part of this is is the black rose, but like Shiori is, is a fucking weirdo too. Holy shit. That's so cool. Weirdly, that was also kind of hot, I'm not gonna lie. Which, to be fair, not the first, literally the second time in this, vi in this video that we've had that situation. And time to go back to our two friends in the, in the, in the mirrors, in the glass, in the... Well, not everyone, but... Aww. あれも恥ずかしいことだなんて思いませんよ。そうかしら。そうですよ。誰でも履いてます。ゲートのパンツくらい。だけど<笑> Almost like... Almost like we're trying to say something there. Yeah, you need to fuck Shiori up right now. I don't know where this is gonna go with Shiori and Jury, but... Oh. Alright, the subtitles are... They're not green and they're at the bottom. Interesting. Very curious how she wins this duel and if it's a fate thing, because obviously Shiori will be fighting with Juri's blade, essentially. And what I mean by that is not literally, but she will have Juri's skill. And Juri is not only was Utsuna match for Juri, but Juri's even better than she was when Utsuna dueled her, so... How the hell does Utena win this? And is it something similar to how she won the previous battle with the uh, jury? That always looks so cool. That's such a great visual. Yep, the apocalyptic darkness is here. Let's get it. Here we go. Castle in the sky. A trick of light. Yep, back to the tables and now the bird. It hit the glass. どうしてあなたがこれが私、本当の私。光輝く樹の影で惨めに生きてきた化け犬じゃない。光を忍ぶ本当の私。Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. I'm very curious with this song. The eternal opposing relationship. In the two sides of a mirror. Interesting. I always love how the reflection of, uh... And, and, and it goes to green! What?! Okay, subtitles. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know how you beat her. You've always been strong. She's more than you thought she was, so really everything you're saying is the opposite of the truth. And you're just too blind to see that, Shiori. False <laughs> world surfaces made of props and painted backgrounds. Almost sounds a little bit like, uh, like an anime, doesn't it? Earth is just a trick made by man. 
ball of gas made by man glass, sorry. The earth is just Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, girl. Talk about a crisis of confidence there. Where do we go from here, though, with Shiori and Juri? Man, there goes another one into the incinerator. Hmm. Interesting. And it's going to be at her feet, yet the, the necklace. And that's the thing, Shiori's not going to remember that. Shiori's not going to remember that. What the fuck? Yeah, she's not going to remember any of that. Mm-hmm. And... And, and she's the type that could read it. She is a wicked girl, but that might honestly that might honestly be part of why Jury fell for her in the first place. Like she it's a weird mm -hmm. I'm rooting for you, Jury. I don't know, I feel like you deserve some someone better than Shiori, but you're also kind of fucked up too. I don't even know. I just know that this shit is fire. And like, I love this show, and I hope everyone's happy and gets to like... Like, love people and be loved and shit. Like, I want that for them. Um, maybe not Sayanji, but no. Even Sayanji, believe it or not. Um, but no, certainly the others. <laughs> Jury included, who, you know, Jury can be a bitch at times, you know, half the time, at least. But, still, we're, we we stand Jury in this household, where we are absolutely on that Jury bandwagon, as we are with basically all the characters, because Mickey's goaded, Utsuna's goaded, love Auntie, uh, Nanami is maybe the best character, Toga is maybe the best character. Actually, just everyone's great. All right. So that was episode 17 of Utena, and obviously getting a continuation of the jury shit with Shiori was really cool. Shiori's now back in the fold. She was never really in the fold, but now she is part of the fold. So we can we can play into that with Jury, because that is kind of a huge crux of her character and the intrigue behind it. So we could actually play into that moving forward. So if um you know we could do like jury related stuff with shiori whether it's you know positive or negative that that that, that kind of a plot thread is always there and that's exciting that we can pull from that whenever uh whenever they decide to do it because obviously we're not done with shiori and jury and like that whole dynamic and that whole um plot thread so it will be interesting to see when that comes up again i'll be looking forward to that quite a bit but uh yeah i mean obviously getting the jury centric like this really the only the second like truly jury centric episode was really cool and obviously similar to how we got the mickey thing with his sister you know each character has something sp really specific that drives them and, and you can kind of see in the case of Mickey and his relationship with his sister and how, how interesting that turned out to be. And then obviously Jury with Shiori, like those emphasis leading into these Black Rose duels where Utena has to take care of business and uh, protect Auntie is, uh, it's really interesting. And I think this arc is like really interesting. And I love, I love how it ties into the uh, the core uh, tenets of the various members of the student council and and what makes them their characters who they are like I like how we're kind of like diving deeper into that because in the student council saga we explored those tenets and now that we know them we're 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 twisting the knife in them in in a certain way in this arc so it feels like a natural uh, progression of what we did in the first arc. And it really makes a lot of sense from a storytelling perspective what Ikuhara and the people that worked on this are doing with these characters. And it really just adds even more intrigue and makes me love uh, these characters even more. Like I said, with both Mickey and Jury, like I love those characters more after this set than I did before. And I obviously was really into them before. But like just the way that they're telling these stories is really fucking compelling. And it's something they're doing really, really well in the show. And I, I love it. I love 
what um, how they're handling everything, and I think it's really impressive, and I think it really goes to show you just how fucking great Utena is as a show, and I'm, it, you know, we're 17 episodes in, we still have a lot of episodes, we still have over half, and there's also a film, again, I don't think this will be my favorite show of all time, but even now, I would say there's still the potential, like, we're this deep in and there's still a real chance that could happen. Um, so I think that is the biggest praise I could give to Utsuna so far. Like I am so fucking into this show. I love this show. I can't wait, um, to continue to watch this show and enjoy it even more. And like, yeah, it's just been a fantastic series and, um, it's really compelled me every step of the way. It's either been hilariously funny or really interesting at every step. And I think that, like I said, this is up there as far as my favorite cast of characters. I really, really love the cast of characters. And they're not necessarily that, most of them aren't that bombastic and over the top, maybe a few. Um, but they just work. I feel like they all work in their own way. They fill their own roles. And it's just, it's just a super interesting, um, it's just a super interesting, like I think the character study that is done in this show is super interesting because we're seeing that, like I said, like the different kind of things that drive people and, and how, and how they shape who people become. I think it's just super interesting. Cause like I said, Mickey and jury are two great examples of how, um, one relationship with one person that means the world to them, like completely shaped their entire, uh, beings pretty much like who they were. And it's just super interesting to kind of see that unfold. Um, in these characters and it's one of the reasons why Utsuna is fucking awesome and I just love this show and I'm super excited for more obviously we will continue the Black Rose saga next time that'll be really fun I'm looking forward to that of course and um yeah I'm just having a great time with this show it has been a fantastic show an absolutely fabulous series so far and I can't wait to see um, how it continues to evolve and um, escalate further because th it's just such a great time. Like every time I watch Utena, I um, I fall in love with this show a little bit more, and I'm definitely really impressed with it all the time. It's always it always seems to um, continue to show just how uh, fucking great it is, and I'm loving it. Like I am loving this show, and I really hope um, all of you are really enjoying the reactions because I'm having such a blast. Every time I record this show and share my thoughts with it, uh, with you guys about it, it's, it always just, it's always got me like I'm, I'm, I'm hooked. Like this is a great freaking show and we still got a long way to go, but like I said, I plan to be super, I plan to be, you know, consistent. So maybe not as long as, uh, you think. But uh, whatever the case may be, I think that's going to do it for uh, this reaction for this video. So, uh, yeah, um, this will be going out on the 5th, Tuesday. So I uh, hope you're having a wonderful Tuesday or whenever you're watching this. But, um, yeah. Um, if you want to support the channel, my Patreon is down below in the description. My Discord server also is down there if you want to check that out. And if you want to get in touch with me, DMing me there is probably your best bet. Anyways, uh, Flame and Shark signing out. Hope you have, hope you all have a wonderful, fantastical day, and I'll see you next time with another video. Thanks for watching. Peace.